Hello guys, my name is Kiki and welcome to my channel. I've been a crafter for almost 30 years, yeah, I love it. But if you want to learn how to decorate your home on a budget while having fun at it, subscribe, stay tuned and hit the like. Our first step is going to be sculpting the book and for that I'm going to use the book that I got from Craspire and you can use any book that you have. I'm going to remove the piece that I have in the middle and this is a box but you can use any book you have. Also I'm going to use some of this model magic and as you can see I'm just tucking away those ribbons on the book. And for scul the sculpture <laughs> we are going to use model magic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make every piece of this book, but the eye, I'm going to use a half bead instead of sculpting, sculpting it. <laughs> That's a hard one. Now I'm going to take some of that clay and as you can see, I'm just making some sort of a snake and it is a little bit thicker because we're going to make the square or the rectangle thing that goes on the back of the book, this part. And what I'm doing is I'm just pressing it down like this. After I press this down by hand, I'm going to take a ruler and I'm just going to use that to press it down like this. Then I'm going to make sure that I have a really good rectangle and I'm going to cut the excess using an exacto knife just like this. We cut that excess and I go back to the other side and I cut the excess on the other side as well. Let me just cut it over here and as you can see we have it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my exacto knife to make sure that this is a square and it looks square or rectangle. <laughs> and after I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another snake circle-y thingy like this. And it's just a roll that I'm rolling with my hands. And as you can see, we're making it a little bit thinner than the first one like this and now what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna make the snake that goes on top of it. As you can see I'm just making a pointy tail then I'm gonna go like this making sure that I have some sort of u-shape with them like that and after I do that I'm gonna cut the excess and I'm gonna make its head. Let me just remove the excess over here and let me make that head that I'm just pressing in between my fingers like that and then I'm going to make a pointy head like this. Now we're going to let that dry, we're not going to touch it, but we're going to keep on working on our book. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another snaky thingy by rolling it here on the mat like that. And this one is thinner than the other one. The sizing depends on the book that you're using. And now I'm going to make the spine of the book. And for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this edge over here to make it square like that. And I'm going to start measuring it with the spine of my book like this so I can cut it to size. I just place it over there, press it a little bit, then I'm going to use the exacto knife to cut it to size like that. I'm going to repeat this four times, but I made the first one and the last one and then I added the other two. You can add as many as you want. I only wanted four. And as you saw here, we have them over here. I'm just making sure that they are stuck to the book. This one has a little bit of a fabric kind of texture so it sticks really well to it. Now as you can see I have another piece of that model magic and I'm just making a semicircle with this. I'm gonna cut it in half like that so we can make the eyelids and for that I'm just gonna place it on top of the bead like that. Let me just remove it from the book because I don't want it to stick. I want to sculpt it before I add it to the book. Now I'm just, what, what I'm just doing, <laughs> that was a mouthful, <laughs> is I'm placing both of them together and then I'm going to start sculpting, sculpting, <laughs> sculpting that eye like that. That word, it's really hard for me, sculpting. <laughs> and I'm just going to start pressing it like that using my exacto knife on my fingers to make sure that I have an eye shape. And as you can see, I'm just pushing that excess clay 
downwards like that. Then I'm using my fingers to press it down like this to make that lid shape. So I'm just going to go all around it like this, making sure that I have that eyelid. And like that, we're going to cut the excess over here. After I cut that excess clay, I'm going to save it so we can keep on decorating our book. But we're going to take the eye and we're going to place it on our book. Let me just remove this so we can transfer that eye to the book. As you can see, it's not perfect, but we don't need that to be perfect. We just need it to be smaller. <laughs> now I'm just going to add it over here, make sure that it is centered and start pressing it to my book like that. So it's stuck there and it will be set and ready to when we go painting. <laughs> now I'm just pressing it down like that. I'm just going to make sure that the eyelid is looking like an eyelid. <laughs> and after I do that, I'm just going to press it down really well. Then we're going to move on to decorating the corners. And for that, I'm using another snaky thingy that we did before. And I'm just pressing it down. It's smaller than the other ones like the one on the spine it's a little bit smaller than that one and as you can see i'm making it longer so we can make our snake you're just gonna roll it around like that then you're gonna make your head like this pressing it down and pinching it together pinch the other end to make the tail like that and then we're gonna start rolling it on itself like that just to make those loops that the snake has and as you can see, I have it over here. Now I'm going to just bring that tail to the bottom like that. And I just brought it to the other side. You will see it a little bit later. But I placed it on the book like this. And yeah, I wanted to make it again. <laughs> and as you can see, now the tail goes where I wanted it. And the snake head is the only thing showing. And now I'm going to add the other one. After I finish with this one, I'm just going to place it like this, press it down a little bit so it gets stuck to the book, and we can move on to adding the other one. Here you can see it. I made it, just rolled it around. The tail, you cannot see it because I placed it to the bottom, and I'm sorry I don't have the footage for that one, but you can see it here. And now I'm just pressing it to the book like that so we can move on. To adding the border that goes around the eye and for that one you will see that this snaky thingy it's a little bit thicker let me just roll it like that and then we're gonna take it and press it down as you can see here because we don't need a roll we need some sort of a square thingy you will see it and now I'm just cutting the excess on the corners like that so I can go around the eye. And now I'm just going to place it over here like this. And after I just place it where I need it, I'm going to cut the excess using my X-Acto knife. So I can remove all of that excess. But first I want to make sure that it is set so I don't need or cut excess material. Now let me just remove that, make sure that they are together, press it down a little bit more, make sure that the square, it is like an oval but with square sides, something a little bit weird. <laughs> now I'm going to take a skewer and I'm going to start poking holes or just dots on top of the snake and the back part of the book like this and I'm going to go all around the snake and that part. I'm also going to do the same thing to the snakes on the corners and I'm going to do that to the border of the eye as well. And now I have it here. Now we're just going to let this dry a little bit and I'm going to start working on the scars that the book has. As you can see, we have the sides over here. They are perfect and I'm just pressing them down like that so they look like they are part of the book. Now we just start working on those scars. And as you can see, I have them here. I'm so sorry I lost the footage for those, but I'm gonna show you how I made them. What I did is I took a little bit of that model magic, make a snaky thingy, and start applying it like this. You will see that I used my fingers to blend them together like that, and my X-Acto knife to, to cut all the excess like this. Then I make sure that it is stuck there just by pressing it 
on the borders with my fingers. After that, I use my X-Acto knife to cut all the excess on that corner to make sure that it looks like a scar. After I finish with that, I'm going to take that X-Acto knife and I'm going to go all around those scars in the middle, cutting like this. And then I'm going to take that X-Acto knife and I'm going to start opening the edges so it looks like an actual scar. Let me just go all, all around it so you can see what I did to open those scars. As you can see, I'm just going all over. And then what I did is I start wiggling that exact knife like that. So it opens a little bit more that clay so it looks like actual scar. And what I'm doing is I'm just repeating that all around it. After it, let it dry really well. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I would love for you to subscribe and become part of our YouTube family. And if you're a returning subscriber, you know how much I love you. Remember that in the description box down below, you're going to find the links to all of my social media. So you can go and check me out over there and we can be friends and have lots of fun. Our next step is painting the book and for that we have the dry book and I have this chestnut kind of paint that I'm going to paint the eye and the scars and with the black I'm going to paint the border around the eyes, the snakes on the back and the snakes on the sides of the book. Here you can see that I'm painting those scars with the chestnut paint. You can use any brown you want and that it goes with the base color of your book because you need to start with a plain, simple color book. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going around the eye like that, and I'm so sorry about the lighting because, yeah, golden hour doesn't work so well for books. <laughs> it works for pictures, but not for books. <laughs> now I'm just going to go all around it, and as you can see, I'm just painting it like that. Then I'm going to take the black paint, and I'm going to start painting the snake on the back of the book, and I'm going to paint the snakes on the sides of the book as well. And that border around the eye. Let me just go all around it so you can see it. And here you can see it. And it is all painted. Now we're going to add some white to the eye. And I'm using that Waverly Chalk paint. But you can use any paint you want. And I'm just going to paint the center of the eye like that. Let it dry really well. And here you can see it. It is dried. And now I have some water in this cup. And I have some black paint. And I'm going to mix them together to make a wash. The ratio of the wash is enough water. So you have a watery, water, watery, watery <laughs> down like paint. It is something like water with color. Something like that. <laughs> That's the texture that you want on your wash. As you can see, I'm just mixing it here and I'm making sure that it is watered down enough so we can use it as a wash. Now I'm going to take a paintbrush and this one is a little bit thicker than I wanted, but it worked perfectly for those borders. So I'm going to go all around my scars like that, making sure that I added that wash to the scars and to the center like that. And I'm going to do that all around it. As you can see, I also painted the scars with that heavier kind of wash and I'm just going around the snakes as well to make sure that everything has a little bit of that shadow darker shadow <laughs> and I'm just gonna go all around it after I finish with that we're gonna move on to the book spine and we're gonna do the same going all around it and as well we're gonna paint the top of it like this I'm gonna repeat that to all of them so we can move on so painting, because this is just wash, we need to start painting and blending those colors. Then I'm going to take this brush petals on silver and I'm going to use it to highlight the snakes and the border around the eye. Let me just make sure that I have my paint so we can start dry brushing and I'm having some issues. <laughs> but now I have it and it is ready so we can start dry brushing our snakes. And for that, I'm just going to make it a little bit more heavy handed. You can see that I cleaned it out, but you don't need to clean it. You will see it a little bit later. Now you can see that I started using the paint instead of a dry brush. I just use the same paint brush, but I just use a little less than a full coat, but a little bit more than a dry brush. And you can see it over here. 
and I'm going to repeat the same thing with those snakes on the corners and the eye. Now to highlight the book, I'm going to use the same chestnut paint and mix it with a little bit of white paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another type of brown a little bit lighter. If you have it, you don't need, don't need to mix it. But I just wanted to mix it just to make sure that I had the right type of brown that I needed. So I mixed that a little bit of white with a lot of that brown and I'm going to use my paintbrush to mix it like that. After I mix it really well and I'm going to take my time with this because I don't want those streaks that you can see there. I just want that paint to be really really mixed. So I'm going to take my time mixing it like that and I'm going to show you the whole process because yeah this is the longer version. <laughs> so I'm just going to mix it together like this. Then we're going to start highlighting our book. And you will see that this one is a process on its own. I started on the top of the scars, but it was a little bit too wet. So I decided to go in between those scars and highlighting those places first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start blending. And as you can see, I'm adding a lot of that paint. So don't worry if you're a little bit heavy handed because we're going to start blending after we do this. So I'm just going to go all around it with that paint. And as you can see, it's blending so well with the color of the book. That's why I wanted to use this paint. So I'm just going to do that all around it like this. So we can start adding more of that shadow. And what I'm using is that same shadow that we use or that same wash that I watered down a little bit more. And now I, ju I just blended that like that, like you saw there. And I'm going to show you how I did it over here. I add some of that wash over there. And with that still wet like that, I'm going to start blending it with my paint color that it is the chestnut with a little bit of white. And as you can see, I'm dabbing. Instead of painting, I'm just dabbing that paint. Now I'm going to take this paintbrush and we're going to start highlighting those scars like this. Like when we started. <laughs> and I'm just going to go all around those scars, highlighting them the same way that we did with the book. Like that, just making sure it is a light highlight and not a full coverage. And when we do that, we're going to do the same to the eye like this. And we have a beautiful eye over there. It's so cute. But we're going to keep on doing that until we have the same color that we have all around the book. After we finish with that, we're going to add some of that highlight to the book spine that it is supposed to be fingers, I think. And we're going to do that. Then we add a little bit more wash and then we mix with a little bit more paint to make sure that it looks like a shadow instead of paint. So what I did is I just mixed the colors together like this. And just like that, we have a shadow type of color. Now I'm going to use this beautiful green so we can make the center of the eye. That's the pupil. <laughs> pupil. <laughs> and I'm just going to paint it like this, making sure that I anchor my wrist to the table so we can make a perfect circle. And I did that. I let it dry really well after I painted it. And then I'm going to take some of the same brown that you, we use on the book and I'm going to add it to that just to make sure that it doesn't look so green. And here you can see that I'm just stippling that paint a little bit on that eye. And after that, I'm going to take some black paint so we can make the iris. And with that, I'm going to make another smaller circle in the middle like this. And then I'm going to add a couple of lines around it. Let me just make sure that I have a good circle over here. And as you can see, I'm taking my time, making sure that my wrist is anchored to the table just so it doesn't move so much. And then I'm going to take my smaller or thinner paintbrush and I'm going to start adding lines like that all around the eye to make it look, look a little bit more lifelike. So I'm going to do that all over. Then I'm going to take this plaster Waverly chalk paint and we're going to start making the stitches. And for that, I'm using this thinner paintbrush and I'm just going to go all around it like this, making sure that I'm making smaller lines, that I have enough paint on my paintbrush and that I can go all around it and just getting that 
paintbrush inside that paint as many times as I need to make sure that I have enough paint. Let me just finish with it with this <laughs> and we will have a beautiful book that I will show you now. And here you can see it and look at that. He's so beautiful. I had to do a video only for him because I made it in the part of another video, but I couldn't explain all the details that went to it. I made it in only two days because I had to let that clay dry. If not, it will have taken me like a couple of hours. So it is the fast, easy and beautiful decor that you can make on your own. And that's it for today. This is everything I have for you. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this. And remember to share this video with a friend. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't because that's the free way to help your girl out. It lets YouTube know that you like this content and it will recommend it to other, other beauties like yourself. Take care, my beautiful friends. Bye-bye.